Hi, my name is Will Dean, I'm the Forest author, and today I'm going to talk about how to write a book synopsis. It's good to see you. If you are new to this channel, um, my name is Will Dean. I'm the, I call myself the forest author because I'm an author and I live in a forest in Sweden. And on this channel, I talk about books. I talk about reading. I talk about writing. I talk about publishing. I try and kind of lift the lid on publishing and give you an insight, give you a peek on the inside. Um, and I do that because for years, you know, I was very much on the outside and I found it a little bit difficult to understand how to write a cover letter, how to write a synopsis, how publishing worked, what an agent does for you, that kind of thing. So this is a very relaxed place where I can explain some of those things, have a chat about books, um, talk about some of the books that I love. But today I wanna to talk about synopsis, synopsi, synopsises. Um, synopsis is synopsis. And the thing with the synopsis is it's a very boring document, actually. Writers generally hate to write synopsises because they're not fun. Like when you're trying to write prose, when you're trying to write a story and tell a story to someone, you're trying to make it interesting, you're trying to make it moving, you're trying to make it exciting. It's a living, breathing thing. It's a communication between the writer and the reader. Whereas a synopsis, it's more of a technical document. It's more dry. You have to leave out a lot of the fun stuff and you have to pack in the bones of the story, if you like, in one page or two pages. I try and do it in one page. So it's not fun, it's not interesting, it's not nice to write. You can't use much descriptive language or really any descriptive language. You can't make anything particularly exciting. It's very much like this happens, this happens, this is the main character, this happens because this happens, uh, this is the atmosphere, this happens and this happens, this is the finale. It's uh, Writers hate synopsises and for good reason. Like I don't enjoy writing them, but they're super duper duper important they are extremely important because when you query agents they're probably going to ask for a cover letter a synopsis and the first three chapters or first 50 pages of your manuscript so the synopsis is a really important part of that i think a lot of agents don't put so much weight on the synopsis but it can raise red flags like if you write a synopsis that's 10 pages long and the story doesn't seem to go anywhere, the agent's gonna start getting worried. If you write a synopsis which is a page long and it shows the structure of the entire story, it gives very clear indication of who the three or four main characters are. It explains the conflict at the heart of your novel and it gives some kind of sense of the resolution of the finale of the book that's gonna make the agent feel a little bit more comfortable about committing his or her time to reading maybe your full manuscript at 120,000 words. That's a big commitment for a busy literary agent. Anywho, I have my synopsis with me. The synopsis I used for Dark Pines. And this is the synopsis that I sent along with the cover letter and my first three chapters to 20 literary agents. And 10 of those literary agents requested the full manuscript. And then I very fast, very quickly after that, I got multiple offers of representation. So I want this, this synopsis kind of worked. It's not a great synopsis, I don't think. It's not, it's certainly not a perfect synopsis. It's probably like a fair synopsis, I would say. You know, I've written them since for various different books. And this one is fair, but it should give you an indication of the length of the thing. It should give you some kind of indication of the key components of a synopsis. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this. So it's one page. It's either single spaced or one and a half line space. I can't tell, but it's not double spaced. It doesn't need to be double spaced. If you do it double spaced, it's very difficult to get a synopsis on one page. I'm gonna read this out to you. 
Like I say, this is not going to be exciting. This is not going to be that interesting as a piece of prose, as a piece of literature. It's just a synopsis. It's a technical, dry document. But it'll give you an idea of the structure of the story. Maybe I need to cut some of this out as well, in case it has spoilers. I'll let you know if there's spoilers. Synopsis is the heading. Tuva Moodison, sole full-time reporter at the Gavrik Postum, is terrified of nature. She's 25 ambitious and 90% deaf in both ears. It's day one of the Swedish hunt. A body is discovered. Tuva enters Utgard forest, driving to the house of a reclusive ghostwriter. Tuva interviews Frida, the woman who found the body in the pines. Frida reminds Tuva of her sick mother. Tuva interviews the residents of Utgard. Each one has a motive. Frida's married to Hannah's, boss of the local pulp mill. They're a well-respected couple who live at the very centre of the forest. Tuva researches similar murders from 20 years before. The victims were male hunters and they were shot in Utgard Forest. All had their eyes removed. The community closes ranks on Tuva. Competing with national journalists, she attends police press conferences and then she has to face her fear of the wild so she can investigate deeper. Police question the ghostwriter. Tuva interviews the dancers at a local strip club and discovers that Hannah's is a regular. Tuva spies Hannah's watching violent porn and then sleeping in a separate room from his romance novel obsessed wife. She urges police to question him. The problem is they're all related to, employed by, or good friends with Hannah's. On the way to her mother, Tuva sneaks into a hut belonging to She finds locked cabinets. Hidden under a workbench, Tuva hears rummaging in a Her phone has no reception. Her hearing aids are malfunctioning in the constant rain. Tuva tracks Her hearing aids fail. There's a rifle pointed at her back. Her saviors. Tuva makes it out, writes the story, and then visits her ailing mother. So as you can see, that was very different to the blurb on the back of a novel, which is designed to entice you to read the book. This is a technical document. It's a, it's an, it's a brief explanation of the story, the main conflict and the main characters. And it's designed for publishing professionals, not for readers at large. So it's designed for agents and editors. It's designed for people in marketing, in sales, in publicity, so that they can understand the gist of the story, the main conflict at its heart and the resolution. One big question agents and editors are often asked is, should I include the ending in a synopsis? Should I say, like in a, in a thriller or a crime novel, should I explain who done it? Most agents and editors want to see that. They want to see the twist. They want to understand the twist. They want to see uh, the reveal. They want to understand who did what and why. Some authors do not include that um, because they have a kind of a relationship of trust already with that publishing professional. So they, they want their agent or their editor to read their draft and discover the twist for the first time that way. And I totally understand that, you know, as a writer, I don't want to give things away before the reader has had a chance to read the book. But most agents and editors will want to understand the twist, will want to understand the reveal, will want to know what the resolution is because that's what they're buying into. That's what they're investing their time into. So in conclusion, um, my tips are to keep your synopsis brief and concise and tight. If you can fit it onto one page of A4, that is the best thing, in my opinion. Otherwise, make sure it fits onto two and no more, but one really is the best. Um, I, in this synopsis, had four, three or four characters uh, named and I made their their names bold. Now you've created a whole bunch of characters, a whole cast of characters in your book. It's tempting to name like 10 of them, but it's gonna complicate things. It's gonna make things less clear. Um, I would only name two, three, four characters. The people at the, at the heart of the story, the side plots, the 
incidental stories, the smaller characters do not have any place in your synopsis. You can kind of allude to them when you talk about the scene or the atmosphere, but it's all about your main character and the few key characters around them. It's really about explaining what's at the heart of your story and talking about the beginning, the middle and the end so that your agent or a future agent or editor will understand exactly what your story is about. I hope that's been useful to you. If you have any questions about how to write a synopsis, what should be included, what should be excluded, drop me a comment and I will answer you. But like I say, they're not fun to write, they're not particularly fun to read, but they are really important and it is a skill and a kind of a muscle that you need to exercise as a writer sooner or later. So good luck with your cover letters, good luck with your synopsises, and please do like this video, please do share it on social media, please do subscribe and I will see you again very soon. This has been Will Dean, Forest Author. Bye bye.